magnify the Lord. We thank you, dear God, for your love, your goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness towards us. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you all the praise this morning. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sea, thy name is to be praised. Thy name is to be magnified. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you, dear God, for your love and your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. A pleasant good morning to those who are joining us live on Facebook to be a part of our service. We do want to welcome you um, to be a part of what God is doing at St. James Pentecostal Church. I am Pastor Godfrey Jilks, I'm the host minister of this assembly, and we welcome you. Amen. I want to also welcome those who are present in the house of the Lord here to worship, to magnify, and to glorify the Lord. Uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, and we are here to magnify and to bless his name. So let's just lift our hands. You're maybe in your homes or you're in the house this morning. Just lift your hands with me. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you, dear God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your faithfulness toward us. We thank you for being our God, our source, our strength, and our everything. Father, we thank you, dear God, for ministering by your Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh God, that you will move in this place, move in this service. Let the power of your Spirit break yokes, lift the burdens, and God do the supernatural in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this fresh anointing, the fire of God being manifested in this place. The power of God, the healing strength of God. And Father, we honor you. Jesus mighty name amen amen hallelujah even as we begin amen well I know persons who are on Facebook like to send some digital greetings and those of you who are in foreign countries do let us know where you're from joining us live this morning amen as we bless and praise the Lord amen so we want to welcome our worship team as they come and they lead us amen in this time of worship as we bless the Lord Think about his love. Hallelujah. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that brought. Great is the measure of a father's love of our fathers. And his mercies, could you just lift your hands unto him and worship the King of Kings? There is none like our God this morning, none like him anywhere. He is the only God. Hallelujah. He's the only Savior, the only one that says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And this is the God that we serve this morning. This is the, the Jesus that we exalt this morning. Father, we bless your name. Come on, Father, we bless your name. Father, we honor you this morning. God, they have asked us to wear masks this morning, but still our hearts delight in you this morning, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We break forth with praise this morning. Honor and glory belongs to your name. Honor and glory belongs to Jesus and to Jesus alone. God, this morning, you are the only celebrity this morning, God. 
we hallow your name we exalt your name we bless your name we exalt the name of jesus and jesus alone god it's because of your goodness towards us that we are alive this morning it's because of your goodness towards me and my family and my friends and even those we may not have ever come into contact with god it's because of your goodness and because of your mercy and because of your love that we stand this morning so we bless you jesus come on somebody bless the name of the lord i know it's hard to shout a hallelujah but let your hallelujah you see sometimes there's a song that we sing hallelujah if my hands don't clap then my feet are gonna dance if my feet don't dance then my heart will sing and if my heart don't beat it's because i've gone with him this morning god we have a life so we bless you we bless you with everything that we are everything that we have god it belongs to you and so we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the glory and it started this morning by you dying for us dear god hallelujah what can wash away my sins this morning nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus this morning so we clap our hands and we rejoice and we let somebody know that jesus is able to save amen he's able to keep and he's able to satisfy this morning hallelujah so clap your hands this morning and enjoy the presence of the lord a little bit amen so tell me this morning, listen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And tell me what can make me hold again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow. Thank God, the blood. Come on, we're gonna 
at the sound of the name of Jesus, at the sound of your great name, say Jesus today, Jesus. could be compared with you you see we know you as God today we know you as Lord and Savior some call you Yeshua some call you Yah you are Yahweh God this morning you are the I am that I am you are the beginning and the ending you are the lion and the lamb you are oh God ever think to us so we just adore you this morning we give you honor and we give you worship. We worship you, God. You see, when the music fails, God, you're still worthy of praise. When things are wrong, when things don't look right, we still praise and honor your name because you are in control this morning. So we say hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. He reigns in supreme. He reigns in everything everything every situation come on speak to your situation this morning and you don't need to tell it much that say Jesus is in control of my life this morning and I give you praise I give you honor I give you glory this morning worship the Lord with me this morning we sing together hallelujah 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 For the Lord God Almighty reigns Sing it again, say hallelujah Hallelujah
give praise this morning, God. God be praised in the house of St. James this morning. Let the name of God be praised on Facebook this morning. Let the name of God be praised in the St. James area this morning. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in the land of Trinidad and Tobago this morning. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in the Caribbean this morning, God. You are holy and you are worthy of all honor and all glory and praise God so we give you all the glory this morning God it's due to your matchless name God hallelujah we say hallelujah the Lord God almighty reigns he reigns in the heavens and the earth and beneath the earth there is none like him anywhere so we give you praise we give you praise Put your hands together as we welcome our pastor this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we thank God for that powerful time of worship. Just being in the presence of the Lord. Just one more time, just lift your hands with me. Oh God, we thank you. You're even in your homes, amen, right where you are. Lift your hands with me. You see, beyond the words of a songwriter, there's an expression of the heart that comes from the individual. Could I just ask, could I ask all of us just to express a praise unto God. Give God an expression out of your own heart. You might want to thank him for something. You might want to praise him for something. You might just want to say hallelujah. 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 Oh God, we bless your name. Oh God, we magnify your name. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, thy name is to be praised. Thy name is to be magnified. Thy name is to be glorified. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you this morning. We bless you today. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I do want to welcome you this morning. Those of you who are joining us live on Facebook. Amen, and those of you who are in the house of the Lord. 
Amen. As we have come to praise, magnify, and glorify the Lord this morning because he is good and he is faithful. Amen. As you remain standing, let me ask you, amen, those of you who are here, to turn your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 5, and you read from verse 25. Amen. Thank you, those of you who are joining us on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we trust that we have already been a blessing to you, and we will continue to be a blessing to you. Those of you who may not know me, I'm Pastor Godfrey Jilks, the pastor of this assembly, and we want to say thanks to you for taking this time, inviting us into your homes, and um, also into your hearts, that we can be a part and um, be a blessing to you as an individual. Um, we encourage you to share. We encourage you also to like our Facebook page, to subscribe to to, to, um, of YouTube channel so that you can get notifications from us whenever we are on and you can be a part of what God is doing in this part of the vineyard. Okay, amen. We go straight into the scripture and, uh, and we also want you to send, your di send some digital praise, those of you, and, and tell us where you are from so that you know, we could keep in contact with you. God bless you richly. You're reading from Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 25, and the scripture declares, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garments. For she said, if I, was, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed from that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in, his, in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And the, his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth and he said unto her daughter thy faith had made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague I want to share you for a theme this morning uh, pressing toward victory Pressing toward victory. Bow your heads with me as we go before God. The gracious and merciful Father, once again we bow in your presence. We thank you for this opportunity that you have afforded us, that we could come into your house. And those who are watching by Facebook, we pray that God, the anointing of your spirit, would rest upon all of us. God, that you will meet each person at the point of their need, that there will be a manifestation of the presence and the power of God in and through our lives. Father, bless this witness, charge it with your power, and let the life and the light of the word so permeate hearts and lives, so that the blessing of God, the one that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow, will, the, will be the blessing that will be manifested this morning. God, we recognize that the wrestle, the fight, is never against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. God, demonic powers that militate against your people to cause defeat, destruction, depression, bring us to a place at times of suicide. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, those who are watching, on Facebook. Oh God, who will watch on YouTube, we pray that God, you will break those strongholds of the enemy. We declare chains broken this morning, prison doors open, needs met, that the power of God will turn around situations and circumstances. And Father, we thank you for doing this mighty work in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Pressing toward victory. Victory or success at times could seem to be a moving target, a fading illusion, or even an impossible dream. 
But the truth is, many times while we may look at that target, the finishing line, that place for which we want to arrive to, that while there may be obstacles that might be in our way, the real issue is us. The real challenge that we have is our own insecurities, our own weaknesses, our own socialization into some of those philosophies for which we have been socialized into, into thinking that a dream is impossible. The victory will never be experienced. The blessing will never come from God. And I say to you this morning, that's a lie from the devil. Amen. There is victory in Jesus Christ. And Jesus who came and went to Calvary's cross brought us victory. So that the scripture declares that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Press toward your victory in the name of Jesus. We see in the text for which we have read the story of a woman. A woman who had an issue. And the truth is, all of us have issues. Issues. And an issue based upon the Greek word that is used here, it speaks about that which is given out. To send forth, to let out, to come forth, or to flow out. She had an issue. And issues flow out of you. In fact, in her case, she had a bleeding issue. And when it comes to a bleeding issue, many times persons don't recognize that if you have an issue long enough, people would recognize that you are bleeding. Your issue is bleeding. So that, as the Bible declares, that you can see a proud man from afar off. When your persons have an issue of pride, we see the issue. In fact, if you are in the company of someone who has a money issue, you soon recognize they have itchy fingers. Persons who may have a homosexual issue. Persons who may have a, a lesbian issue. Various issues that we deal with. A drug issue. Persons who, be, who, have, who have a suicide issue. A depression issue. And, and issues face us. And the issues that face us in the period of time for which it faces us causes it to bleed. And to be seen by many persons the bible said this woman had an issue of blood and from a scriptural standpoint and even from a natural standpoint uh, blood speaks of life so she had a life issue you know the, the bible declares that there are no temptation taking you but such as is common to man there are life issues Issues that face all of us, that challenge us as individuals and, and bring us to a place where we are so frustrated and downtrodden. Real life issues. And based upon this lady's issue, in Leviticus chapter 15, from verse 15, the Bible declares that a woman with an issue of blood shall be put apart for seven days. Verse 19 declares... Whosoever touches her shall be unclean. Everything she touches, lay upon or sits upon, it shall be unclean. If a man, or a man is rather contaminated, if he touches her or lays the, on the, the bed that she lays upon, so that it shall be unclean, and that individual had to go through a ritual of washing and then they, be, they would be clean thereafter in the evening time, but the person continues to be unclean. Verse 25 declares, if it continues beyond seven days, she shall be unclean as long as it continues. So that persons who have this issue 
had to live in isolation. Had to live in loneliness. And this particular woman issue lasted for 12 years. Think about being, not being able to be touched for 12 years. Think about if she probably was married before, her husband couldn't touch her. If she had children, her children couldn't touch her. She had to live without touch. We live in a time of COVID-19, that global pandemic that has affected all of us. When the coronavirus hit on nation there are some people I in my estimation who suffer from claustrophobia were very disrespectful in terms of dealing with people and you see them all the time not wanting to touch anybody I remember one time being in the bank and this lady was passing and everybody she passed she kept her distance as if to very disrespectfully not touching anybody because the coronavirus is in the nation and she doesn't want to get it and why she may not want to touch anybody that particular lady Amen. Think about everybody not wanting to touch her. But I can tell you this, when, she, when the person was passing me, I felt uncomfortable. I felt disrespected. As if I have some the virus on me and you are scorning me. So when you think about even this woman having to go through that situation, while this particular person may be suffering from some claustrophobia or may have some underlying sickness or illness that they are so afraid that they don't want to touch anybody, perchance they get the virus or contract the virus, this lady, amen, nothing that she probably negative, negatively did but she found herself in a situation having to live without touch. And it is said that babies need touch for overall growth and development. So from the time you are born and you come into this world, you need to be touched. And the need for touch does not decrease with age. Touch is a way in which we communicate And we care for others, how we connect with them. It is as simple as a shake hand where you shake someone's hand and you connect with them. Touch stimulates physiological processes. Just the gentle holding of someone's wrist could lower their blood pressure. Or the effects are released of natural, the release of natural painkillers and neurotransmitters necessary for mental function. Some studies have shown that people with pets live longer than those who just live in isolation by themselves. Just the opportunity to hold a dog or to hold a cat and having the opportunity to touch it stimulates the body and allows you to live. And it also provokes a smile. So that when you, have to, when you have to live without touch, let me tell you, it is something else. Having to live without touch. And the Bible says worse, beyond that, she suffered many things of many physicians. So she was used and abused. Her, the Bible says she didn't become better, 
but she grew worse. And what we understand, there's one thing we understand in life, and that change is constant. Change is constant. So nobody say that. So, so nothing really remains constant. Change is always occurring. And that's why if you're not progressing, you're regressing. So the Bible said she grew worse. She grew worse because she, had, she was not getting better. She grew worse because she became, in my estimation, a lab rat. Because people, nobody could touch her. But keep, people keep advising her and poking at her. She grew worse because every new doctor was a new opportunity for new hope, which quickly faded. She grew worse because her reputation grew. Began as a, as a, as a private issue, and now everybody knows your business because it's now 12 years. Some personal private issues that you don't want anybody to know about, but now people recognizing somebody missing, somebody in isolation, and they're there for a month, for a year, people begin to talk. She grew worse because she moved from a credit into deficit. The Bible said she spent all that she had. So whatever money she had, and, and based upon what the text is saying, she had some money to spend. So the Bible was, 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 was uh, clear to, to state, stated clearly that she spent all that she had. And the Bible stated such because she had something to spend. And she moved from credit to deficit. She spent all her emotional energy. She spent all of her time. And she didn't get better. But the blessing this morning is that she heard of Jesus. Hallelujah. And uh, amen. She didn't just hear of Jesus, but she hear, amen, of she heard of his miracle working power. If you look at the, the text, amen, she probably would have heard that he cast out the demoniac. She probably heard that he stilled the storm. She probably heard of the miracles that he performed. And hearing such, when Jesus came to town, amen, she made a decision. She said within her heart, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Can I ask you this morning, have you heard of the goodness of Jesus? Have you heard of the testimonies of the power of the Almighty God? That God is able to save, that God is able to keep, that God is able to satisfy. Amen. That Jesus is the answer for the world today. We tell people, don't try Jesus, but trust him. Amen. Because he is able to make a way for you within your situation. Where doctors fail, Jesus does not fail. Amen. Where the economy will fail, where politicians will fail, Jesus will never fail. Amen. Do I have a witness this morning? Amen. That Jesus is a winner and Jesus brings victory. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and give God a praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, she heard. She heard. And the Bible says, hearing such, she began to press. Because she decided to touch the hem of his garment. And the scripture declares that she pressed because there was a crowd. I've come to recognize, as Jesus says to his, his disciples, you're going to the other side. You know, you get a word from the Lord. You get God speaking something onto your life. And you're there, you find yourself now in the midst of a crisis, in the midst of a storm. You want to accomplish something, and the thing is financially impossible. You don't know how you're going to work it out. You don't know how you're going to make it. And, and life somehow pressing towards victory. There are always obstacles. 
that we have to face. So Paul speaking in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, he says, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to so those things that are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, I am going to press because I need to forget. And could I say this morning, if you're praying for something long enough, there are some of us who are here now start to live, but there are some of us who have been praying for some things a long time. You know, if you praying for something, not just a year, you're praying for it two years, three years, four years. To come before God again, it is seemingly difficult at times. Because all the years that you have prayed, many times the devil used those years to discourage you. The devil used those years to frustrate you, to say to you, it makes no sense going to God again. It makes no sense to believe again. I want to encourage somebody to pray again. I want to encourage somebody to believe the Lord again. I want to encourage somebody to hope again, to trust the Lord again. Amen. To press again. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching onto those things that are before. Press toward that mark of the high calling of God. The Bible says she pressed. She pressed. And in this case, the fact is she wasn't supposed to be touching anybody. And nobody was supposed to be touching her. So you know there are some times you have to break protocol. Not necessarily break the law, but break protocol. You know like Bartimaeus, when he began to call on Jesus and he began to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And somebody say, making too much noise. He wasn't necessarily breaking the law. But he was breaking protocol because in his heart and his mind, he had to ensure that he touched Jesus Christ. Amen. And he was connected to him. This woman had to break some protocol. So she wasn't necessarily touching people, but she was moving them aside. You know, sometimes you have to move some things aside to get to your target, to get to your destination, to connect with the Lord. Bible says she pressed. And she said within her heart, if I but touch the hem of his garment. And we recognize the significance of the hem of the garment in, in Numbers chapter 15 from verse 37. Where the Bible declares that Moses instructing the children of Israel to make tassels on the corners of their garments. So they would wear that rectangular garment and, and, and they would put it over them as a mantle. And at the four corners, there would be tassels. And, and, and Moses said, I want you to do this so that you will remember all the commandments of the Lord to keep them. And it should be also a sign of holiness. In Malachi chapter 4 and verse 3, Malachi prophesying of the Messiah said that the Messiah shall arise with healing in his wings. And that healing in terms of the wings speaks about the borders which was referring to the tassels. So the children of Israel understood that the Messiah when he come, the very tassels on his garment had healing virtue. So when she came to Jesus Christ, when she was pressing to touch him, she understood the scripture. She understood the word of the Lord. She understood that if she touched Jesus Christ, he will heal her. He will deliver her. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. So even though there was a crowd, even though persons were, were pressing against him, even though persons were there, the Bible said he, she pressed to touch him, to connect with him. And she connected with the right person. Amen. Because I could I say to us, it's, impo it, it's important that we connect ourselves to the right people. Amen. Have you ever heard birds of a feather flock together? 
You know, so, so many times we hear on the, on, the, on the television, he was a good boy. And yes, he was a good boy, but he has the wrong friends. Because if, you, if you're in the wrong environment, you're branded with the environment that you're a part of. Whether you like it or not. And whether you like it or not, if you have the wrong friends, your friends will soon enough influence you. Sometimes you have to change your friends. Careful who you're connecting to. So I often say to persons, you have to be careful who you connect to. Because why it is you would want to connect yourself to someone who wants you to go to hell with them, but that person doesn't want to go to heaven with you. You're connecting yourself with someone who wants to go to all the parties and enjoy all the pleasures of the world, but they can't come to church with you. Let me tell you, be careful who you're connecting yourself with. I see in the scripture with Jacob, Jacob held on to the Lord and he says, God, I'm going to hold on to you until I get my blessing. And sometimes you have to hold on to the Lord, connect with him and say, God, I'm not going to let go until I get my blessing. Amen. Do I have a witness of somebody who will say, I want to hold on to the Lord this morning and I'm not going to let go until I get my blessing. It may take some years, but I assure you the God that we serve is a faithful God. If you believe the Lord is a faithful God, come on, put your hands together and give him a praise because he is faithful. Connecting yourself. You know how the woman saying, I'm not going to stay here. I'm not, um, I want to press toward because in, in the midst of it, of the obstacles that face you as an individual, there's a decision that we have to make. The Bible speaks about the four lepers in 2 Kings chapter 7. Where they made a decision. And they said, if we stay here, we will die. If we go into the city, we will die. If we go into the enemy's camp, we will die. But perchance they may save us alive. But it makes no sense staying here. It makes no sense staying here. And I've, I've learned something in the scripture from Adam and Eve. And I often say this, thank God for Jesus. I want to thank God for Jesus. I want to pause in this moment. I make the point here, but I want to thank God for Jesus. Because I recognize without Jesus, let me tell you, without Jesus, you could be in a bad place. So we have this whole movement of the Black Lives Matter. And persons who have experienced experience systemic racism. And they are where they are. Even those who have come out of it, even, they are, even though they might be educated even though they may have some wealth they're still disrespected just because of their class uh, and the color of their skin what have you and some persons they just don't know how to come out how to come out of poverty how to how, how to make themselves a better person and i want to thank god because i believe jesus is able to make you a better person because many times outside of jesus there is no hope. But I believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is able to make the difference within your life. And he's able to do the supernatural. Because without him, let me tell you, without him, you will never break that cycle of poverty. You will never make, break that cycle of inferiority. That cycle of, of, of weakness, of depression. Never be able to do it. He made a decision. And I thank God for Jesus. Because Jesus helped me to make a decision. Because many times I'm looking at those persons and I'm hearing all the arguments of why they're unable to move. And I thank God that I was able to move. Hallelujah. I, I was able to make a decision. I was able to understand that 
with, with Adam and Eve, everybody have an excuse. And I, I've come to realize if Adam could blame Eve and Eve could blame the serpent, those individuals who are innocent, imagine me who now born in sin and shape and in iniquity. So women blaming men, men blaming women, everybody blaming each other. Have you heard somebody say, it's the government, it's the system, it's the color of my skin, and, and, and so many different things. And, and it's issues, pleading issues, issues that the truth is, psychology, many times it's not helping, the government is not helping, but the good news this morning is that Jesus is able to help, and Jesus is able to turn around this situation. Come on, if you believe that, give the Lord a praise offering this morning, because Jesus is able... Amen. I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus. Anybody in the house this morning, you thank God for Jesus. Those of you who are watching me, we want to thank God for Jesus. And we're not just saying that. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you don't know where the Lord has brought us from. If you only take some time and tell you how good God has been to us and where God brought us from. If it had not been for the Lord that was on our side. Anybody here this morning that the Lord has picked me up, the songwriter said turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for saving and for keeping. The woman said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she pressed toward victory. Jesus said unto her, thy faith had made you whole. Thy faith. Thy faith. Faith, faith. It's faith that makes a difference. Faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith. Verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith. Have faith. Because I tell you this, it's more than the tassel that she touched. It's more than her pressing through the crowd. But it's her having faith in Jesus Christ. Because faith makes a difference. So in Mark chapter 9 and verse 23, the scripture declares, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Believe. Have faith. It is that which substantiates the promises of God towards us, even though they are future in fulfillment. Faith makes them present realities within our lives. So when you have faith, even though you may be sick within your body, you declare, I am healed. When you have faith, your pocket might be empty, but you declare, I am rich. You may not know all the details of what is happening within your life. And at times things might seem real dark. But that, that doesn't change the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That we are blessed and highly favored by God. That we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Amen. At times we may not be able to trace his hand. But we could always trust his heart. Because God remains a faithful God. Hallelujah. And we thank God for his faithfulness. Jesus says your faith. Your faith. And these stories are there for a reason. These stories are there in the Bible to say to us who have been going through for some time to continue to believe God. Continue to hope in God. Continue to trust the Lord. Everybody has their individual story. Your story is not my story and my story is not your story. But I know this one thing. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he may fall, amen, the Lord, he will not be utterly cast down because the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And David declares, I was young, and yet now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread, that he is ever merciful, that he is able to lend. Amen. I might not be going through what you're going through, but my life is orchestrated by the Lord. The Lord is writing my story. The Lord who is sovereign, he knows the challenges, the trials, the tribulation that I will be facing. And in the midst of it all, he will remain a faithful God to me. Could I say to you that the Lord will remain a faithful God to you? God is faithful. Amen. God who is sovereign, he will not allow us to be tempted that above we are able. Hallelujah. God is faithful. What I'm going through, I will come through because God is a faithful God. This, is, this test will soon be a testimony. Hallelujah. What I'm going through, God will take me through. And I've come to know that life has seasons as I close. You see, when you're pressing towards victory, you, you face obstacles. And when you read Psalm 23, you recognize that the psalmist begins his psalm on the mountaintop. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. What a blessing that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen. Let me tell you this. When the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want, you just feel nice. You feel good. You feel so blessed because the Lord is your shepherd. Amen. But then you recognize the season change. Amen. Now you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And while the psalmist says, I will fear no evil, trust me, there are some people who are fearing evil. Because when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, that means it's not easy to go through that valley. It's a valley of the shadow of death. You better, amen, keep yourself connected to Jesus because once, amen, you release your grip or your hold, trouble. But then the season change, changes. He anoints my head with oil. My cup run it over. And surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that last part there is saying goodness and mercy is following me. You see, goodness and mercy is following me when I'm on the mountain. And goodness and mercy is following me when I'm in the valley. It doesn't matter the season of my life. What I'm going through presently is only temporary. It's not my destiny. My destiny is in heaven to be with my Savior. To live, amen, in the blessing of the Almighty God. So I don't allow what I'm going through presently to stress me but in the midst of it all I open my mouth and I speak a praise unto the Lord I can't trace his hand but I could always trust his heart because God is a faithful God I encourage us this morning press toward your victory press towards your destiny hold on to Jesus amen fight the good fight of faith amen it may not always be easy but God is a faithful God Press toward your victory today. There is victory in Jesus Christ. Stand with me, those of you who are here. We want to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. Come on, lift your hands with me. Father, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. God, we lift our hands as we, oh God, uh, speak your praises. We lift our hands uh, as we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness. Uh, God, we lift our hands, God, in all in our homes. We lift our hands uh, as we magnify and we glorify your name. Uh, oh God, as we worship you this morning, uh, as we thank you for being our God, our source, our strength, and our everything. Uh, Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We give you a high note of praise uh, because you are God and that you are in control. We 
thank you, God, there are all, all of us who are here today, God, who are watching, viewing. God, there are issues, real issues, financial issues, family issues, social issues. Oh, God, spiritual issues, issues that we face. God, some of us, it's bleeding issues. The issues oozing from us. Oh God, the drug issue, the alcohol issue, the gambling issue, the family issue. Oh God, the pornography issue. Issues that God, we are now bleeding. God is now oozing from our being. God, we come to you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray that the power of God will break those strongholds of sin. Break those chains in the name of Jesus and cause the power of God to so flow through our lives that we would experience victory. Oh God, we reach out and we touch. Come on, somebody reach out and touch the Lord this morning. Come on, reach out and touch him. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord. There's a manifestation of the presence and the power of God. Come on, reach out and touch him this morning. The Lord is in the house. The Lord is here. The Lord is in the midst of us. The Lord who is mighty, hallelujah, is in the midst of thee. He shall save. He shall deliver. He shall work miracles. He shall restore. He shall strengthen. Come on, take some time and talk with him. Speak with him. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. If you want pardon, if you want peace, if you want healing, if you want deliverance, if you need strength, Jesus is here this morning to heal and to deliver. Reach out and touch him. Move beyond your religion and touch him. Somebody's looking at me at this time, amen. I hear the Lord saying, His religion, His religion. I see you. I see you. You have a different religion. You have a different philosophy. But you're, you're viewing this program this morning and you're saying, I need to move beyond my religion that has placed some barriers in front of me. Come on. In the name of Jesus. God is speaking to you directly and God wants to work a miracle within your life. God, amen. Arise in faith and move from where you are and reach out and touch the Lord. Come on. Lift your hands. You, you, you have a problem with lifting your hands. God said, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands and reach out and receive of the Lord this morning. I pray for those who have been going through. Those you're you, you you viewing and you're saying today that I have been going through this thing for years. I like that woman. It has been eight years. It has been 12 years. It has been 20 years. It has been nine years. Amen. God is speaking to you and God is saying to you, I am God. Reach out and touch me and see, experience my miracle working power. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for healing. We thank you, God, for delivering. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you for filling us up with your spirit. Thank you for giving us the strength that we need to stand and to fight and to walk in victory. We thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I want to stop and pray for those who are not saved. What a time to live in. You might be here in church this morning. Or you might be viewing over Facebook or YouTube. You're not saved. You're not born again. We live in a time where Bible prophecy has been fulfilled right before our eyes. We have the coronavirus that is a global pandemic. We have the locust plague that is in Africa, that is in Asia, that is in South America. All around the world, the locust plague affecting. We hear about wars, we hear about rumors of wars, we uh, pestilence, farming. We, the impact of the loc locust plague, we will hear probably next year or year after. But these are the times that we live in and we have such an opportunity for Bible prophecy, to see Bible prophecy fulfilled before our eyes. I want to encourage you this morning 
to make your calling an election so if you're not saved you're not born again and you want to act, invite jesus into your heart i want to pray for you father in the name of your dear son jesus i thank you for that young man who is bowing his head right now that young lady that mother a mature man who is saying i need jesus i want to make my calling an election show I pray, God, that you will touch them from the crown of their head to the very soles of their feet. I pray that the anointing of your spirit will destroy every yoke of sin, every stronghold, every habit, every vice. Oh, God, things that God affect them negatively. I pray that the power of God will visit these individuals and they will be born again of the spirit of God. I thank you for them accepting Jesus within their heart and making him Lord and risen Savior. I thank you, oh God, for saving and for delivering in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, for these individuals. God, those backsliders, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we pray for our nation. We pray for nations of this world. God, we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we reach out to you, you who are our God. We ask for help. Oh God, that this global pandemic that is affecting all the nations and, and the locust plague and all the devastation, the unrest, the rioting. Oh God, these demonic powers that are roaming the earth. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you by your Holy Spirit, you will so move upon the earth and God, you will break some of those strongholds in the name of Jesus and God, you will cause rest and you will cause peace and you will cause strength and God, those most of all, God, some things we understand will happen and must happen but we are praying that God, there will be a mighty revival upon the earth in the name of Jesus that God, you will save and you will deliver and he will draw men by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for doing this mighty work. We thank you for our own nation that persons would not get tied up and caught up with politics, but that God, you by your Holy Spirit, you will continue to cover our nation and that your hand will continue to be upon us. We bless you and we honor you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let me say thanks to those who joined us on Facebook. Amen. God bless you richly and we pray that you will have a great rest of the day. Amen. And we ask you to subscribe to us. We ask you to um, like our page. Amen. And uh, ensure that you share so with someone so that they could also be a part because we don't want you to just view us on Facebook. If you're in Trinidad, you should visit us sometimes, sometime and be a part of one of our services. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward also to hearing from you. And we say God bless you richly.